Do we need to do a welcome back? Or welcome to? Or are you not yeah. worry about that? Episode three, four? Three, four? Let's start, I think we're on four. Four? Episode so, four, welcome. Okay, start, yeah. Stop, ah, and start. <coughs> breathe. Oh, I thought you said, I, I'll start. <laughs> I said, and start, please. <laughs> <And> start, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, right, welcome to episode four. Uh, we were just... <clears throat> We were just discussing memes and genes and yes. Richard Dawkins' uh, book, The Selfish Gene. And you said that memes, are, or chapter five of that book, Selfish Gene, memes, helps us understand what you were suggesting, that human beings, the reason they differ, or we differ, or let's say they differ from other animals, is they have a narrative story or narrative structure which they build around themselves you can you use the words I'm, I'm i'm fumbling here well i mean I, i'm extending some of what um dawkins is saying i'm I, okay a lot some of this is my own take on it i mean i always think meme the meme is a slightly uh undefined construct but it, essentially oh let me help me understand then how does okay the, the word meme yeah i'll use some basic questions because the questions that i have because i'm a basic kind of kind of guy sure where does the word meme come from who coined it, and on that occasion, what was the apparent meaning of meme, so we can better understand when we get to your extension of it. Sure. Right. Well, uh, off the top of my head, I believe that Richard Dawkins coined the word meme. I believe he did it in one of the chapters in his Selfish Gene, and it was ba basically, com he was com contrasting it with the, with the nucleotide. And as, you know, the new, the, what he called, that the, the you know life began from a self-replicating molecule, and that the, the the first first life was a string of organic you know mo uh, molecules, and that was the first self-replicating molecule, and that the same process has occurred inside our minds with a new type of non-physical self-replicating molecule, the meme. The meme is the mental version of a mm. gene. Okay. It's, a, it's a new type of replicator, as life was the new type of replicator. The meme, okay. is, a, the, the meme is a new type of replicator. It's okay. non-physical, non but still party to the same kind of processes of natural selection. So, okay, okay, let's pause on that one. Let's sort of, let's just digest that a little bit. The word within that, that I'm drawn to is non-physical. Sure. It's non it isn't, again, I could ask a naive question. Again, forgive me if it's one which you go, oh, come on, Matthew, get with the program. But non-physical, uh, where materialists would argue everything is physical. That even, well, ment um... even mental actions are essentially something that, that uh, either arises out of or is just one manifestation of physical activity and chemical activity within brains and so on it's dependent upon the biological but it's i mean i think the, the easy way of thinking about it is co like a computer i mean what we're talking about is the mind the, the brain is the computer the the meme is the software yeah but even software it lives exists in a, in a physical universe isn't but, it so, wait, wait, soft, but software isn't Yes, it exists in a physical world, but but software is not a physical thing. It is a one and a zero, it, it, but, you know. Yes, which is an on and an off, right? But the on and the off does not capture Windows Ten, right? So I don't think that that's the Other right. Other operating level. systems are available, folks. Other operating systems are available, and so I don't think it's right to say, well, you know, it's a, a one or a zero. It's an on or an off, and therefore that explains it all. No, that's the wrong level to be looking at. Yes, the operating system is essentially ones and zeros, but that's not the level that we're dealing with it. We're dealing with a much higher level, okay. at, the level where, at the level where graphics are being drawn to a visual screen and, and with windows and levels and, and file operating system operations. And that's what we're talking about. The, the meme needs the biological in the same way that the operating system needs the RAM and the hard drive and the and the and the uh, the other parts of the world, but that but it's a higher level process. So even a higher so higher level. 
It's a higher level. And I, I, I do understand. I understand what you're saying. I'm not a complete dick. No, I do no, understand. I didn't, I I didn't just, think you are. <laughs> well, for a long time. Anyway, um, answer the postcard. If um, okay, a higher level. Because again, you you hear that discussion that kind of word saying, oh, you know, a higher consciousness, a higher level of something. We operate on different levels. So yes, I understand that. We can understand software, which is then, which of course, in that analogy, is created by, well, used to be a, a human or a manifestation of a human who's saying, okay, it'd be really useful to be able to check my email in this way and, and be able to send stuff or blah, 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 blah. Sure. I'll create a piece of software. Sure. I'll create something using this system of ones and zeros. And this is where even you and I have different things because you are, you say you're not a programmer, but you are more familiar with let's call it, I don't know, <laughs> oh God. I'm a bit of a techie geek. Yeah, yeah, you know, the word technology, as in techie geek is a nice way of doing it. But even yeah. when we first were sort of speaking 12 years ago or more, yeah, you're going, well, here's how you can do it using this piece of kit, you can do it this way. And I'm getting the time, I'm not really bothered how the detail works. Right, I'm right. just faced with the kind of the user, the user experience, sure. a bit like life. My most concern is, well, what's the user experience like? If I can do it this way, great, I'll use that bit of software. But somebody somewhere, the programmer goes, I can do it this way. I can take ones and zeros, put them in this all. And am I right in thinking that basically all computer software boils down to ones and zeros, no matter what programming language you're using? Yeah, essentially, yeah. It's digital. That's what it means, digital, isn't it? Digital, something's on or off. You combine that in a different way, uh, sure. different ways. Look at the variety of things that you can create to do whatever, play games, do photographs, whatever it might be. Sure, essentially um, programming languages talk to um, the, the hardware. Okay, and get the hardware to do certain things. And get the hardware to do certain things. And uh, whether, where, where, whether that's process, you know, do calculations and give the software back the calculations that it's been doing. Okay, so in that context then, so, okay, then the question again, forgive me if these are just naive questions or going off the boil. You know, redirect me if that's the case. Memes, which you're saying is that so-called non-physical, in the context of software, do we, we see memes operating within the computer environment? Does that happen? Is there anything I mean, separate, self, self-replicating in a... Or are we there in the context of what we might call artificial well, intelligence? I, like, no, I'm, I, I'm, in, I'm out in the deep here, folks. I'm just yeah. I'm not sure... What questions I'm asking until I ask them. So well, I, maybe this is where you uh, say more. Artificial intelligence is definitely an interesting question. Uh, uh, I think these are questions we'll deal with later on when we've kind okay. of. Okay, so let's keep to memes then. So, so, meme then, tell me more about a meme as you understand how Dawkins described it or others have used the term. Because the other person actually who's very key in this conversation, and if, if we had things planned at all here, we go right at this point, we get this person on the line, but we may for an episode soon if it was appropriate. Yes, There's another person who's obviously written quite extensively about some of these ideas, who is both professionally close to both you and me. I'm assuming you're going to think of the same person as I'm thinking of. This is a guessing game, folks. Yeah. What name comes to mind for you there, Louis? I guess it's Susan Blackmore. Dr. Susan Blackmore, who was your external examiner for your PhD. Sure. And was one of two external examiners for my PhD. So she features in sure. our so-called narrative story narrative structure that we are building sure. around ourselves so i'm sure she has something to say on this possibly she didn't like me very much though so i'm not entirely convinced that she'd want to talk to me well uh, uh, well interesting again in terms of our stories uh, yeah. again i guess where we can go off on a story route or we can pause or we can just save that for somewhere else i mean, I, I prefer talking these things than writing stuff yeah. i find talking as you'll discover easier to get into that flow experience rather than okay if i stop and write i've got to think about the words i'm going to choose and so on but both you and I, alongside that, the experience of having her as an external, super, uh, external examiner for a PhD, and by the way, folks, many of you listening to this won't even you know, won't care about PhDs, understandably, and why should you? As part of the final stage of a PhD, you have what's called a viva, you sit and so-called defend your thesis and talk it through, and one of the key people in that, let's call it a conversation, is the external examiner, somebody outside of the university who is asked to read your thesis, raise questions, and get you to talk about it. So we've had the conversations with her about her own PhD topics, and we can come to those at some point in that context. I've also had conversations with her, at least one in particular, 
I'm just key to these kinds of questions. And I know you have. I re remember thinking, or at least through email, through the blog or something. Am I right in thinking you had a little bit of discussion about everything being memes? pointless? Okay. Did that include a discussion about memes, or is not is that not featured um, in the conversation? I, no, I don't think it. I think it's more about. I think she did a, a an edge. Is it the edge? And she did uh, a question. I'm sure it was what What's the most dangerous idea? And I think hers was okay. every, everything is pointless. Oh really? Yeah. She's actually saying, okay, this is really good yeah. then. So tell me more about that. And so or and or can we point listeners, viewers, listeners? Of course, we haven't got images here, folks. Just as well. Um, can we point listeners to at least one or more blog posts on your blog? Are they still there? Uh, there is a there is a conversation with Susan Blackmore, I believe. Okay. Which it's on about. It's, uh, it's in the noteworthy posts. It's a little chat that we had together. Okay. And so people want to go there. For those that, let's say, can't be asked, yeah. what, um, what was the essence of that? Um, if I, I mean, it's been a long time since I read it, so I'm just <laughs> off, the, off the top of my head. Oh, in this um, case, how about some of this is saying, okay, how about we are, we, we may endeavor to, to return to this either if we would like to invite, uh, see, it's exactly, we used to always, I always, always I always thought of Sue's and Blackmore as Sue, Sue Blackmore. And then I sure, think sure. professionally, it's a bit like me, Matt and Matthew, is that professionally, of course, she is Dr. Susan Blackmore. Well, she's now Professor Susan Blackmore, isn't she? I think she's uh, a yeah. visiting professor. So, and, uh, so maybe, again, we can pause there and, and go and look. Let's, let's kind of keep these to memes then, but we're just noting that Susan Blackmore will also have written about it. The Meme Machine, I think was one of her books. Meme Machine, yeah, yeah. Um, but let's come back to the idea then. What, what is a meme then? I mean, what do you mean by so-called non-physical self-replicator? All right, but well, can, can I can I just say that from my perspective, it's not. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, it's not the most fleshed out concept. Even when Dawkins introduces it. Even when and, and I I remember when I read the self regime, I didn't like the meme chapter. I didn't like it. Too simplistic. Do, doesn't explain enough. Didn't like it. And uh, it's only now. You know, many, many years later that, that I'm, I've come, you know, to what I think is a fairly similar conclusion, equating the genetic with the, with the mimetic, you know. Um, and equating I, not, the generic with the mimetic. So I've got a clue what you're talking about. Right? I say the genetic. You and anybody else listen. No, the genetic, Ge sorry. Genetic. The genetic with yeah. the generic. Genetic with a mimetic. Mimetic. Oh, so, so it's it's basically that you know what what is true for the and we why the beginning of life is very interesting you know what how the very first naked replicating molecule forms and that you know it's a similar process in the minds of those early uh, you know pre-human early human ancestors where you know you go to the caves you look at their paintings and you know you, you look at their tools. And you can see that their minds go from being an animal, purely mechanistic, you know, a computational device for dealing with information, to becoming human slowly. Until they become something that we recognize as human, which doesn't happen, you know, for you know, 10,000 years ago. And before that, so, on. And before that, they're not really the same as us. Who's the they here again, sorry? Say that again? Who's the they in this? Animals. She, well, what, what, or, or, or our, again, what's our, the ancestors, they? our ancestors. So the question then I'm going to, so what happens that takes it from stuff that wasn't, what, what's happened, what, what, language. how do we evolve out of the I mean, language? Uh, okay, language? you've got children now, yeah? Last I mean, time I looked. Yeah, every time you're raising a child, you must see the change from a from a, a, an ape to a human being. Well, they weren't that hairy, but I got to say, yeah. It goes from being a creature which is kind of flailing around and gripping and burping and things to suddenly you inject it with words. And those and that was words. I'm there, gripping and flailing and burping. Sorry, carry on. And, and those words, they join together, and then until at some point, about the age of three, when, you're, when, you, when your childhood amnesia suddenly stops happening, and, and you, be, you become, you know, the human being lights up. Okay. Uh, you yeah, say that's through language. Are you having a wee there, Matt? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you would love me to, wouldn't you? I what you love. No, I am not. I don't right. hear that though. I walked into the kitchen. Actually, I'll tell you what I am doing. I'm going to be open. I'm walking down into the kitchen, and I'm going to do it. I'm running it. That was a tap running, so you can hear that. Sure, sure. You're washing up. Well, I know. I'm, I'm staring at washing up, which I'm choosing not to do. I'm pouring some water into a little small milk bottle, right? So that a little flower, which is a, uh, it's a rose that was Aww. purchased for my darling lady wife. Uh, and I'm refilling it, so I'm taking it now up the stairs and placing it to the side of her bed. Uh, that's uh, what I was actually doing. Uh, ever, all together, ah. Uh, yes, and that's so, an elaborate narrative structure I've told you right. to pretend I wasn't having a wee. Right. Sorry, you were saying? I was saying that when you see a child go from, you know, infant, baby, non-verbal, non-conscious, non and then okay non-conscious okay, non-conscious yeah, yeah. then as you as you give it language you give it the 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 uh, the, the molecules of cognition what we might call memes and the that molecules of cognition oh it's yeah. name for a band the molecules of cognition and then which, which we get we get cognitive fire you know the rocks are pushed together and we get what i call is a human being in there for example if i could just say helen keller she was blind and deaf. Yeah. She says that before she was given language, and the guy that taught Helen yeah. Keller, the guy that taught Helen Keller, he ran her uh, her hands under water, and at that point she started to realize it was hot and cold. And she said before that happened, there was nothing inside her, no experience whatsoever. And she was a much older child. You know, she wasn't three when they started to try and impart language on her. But as soon as she started, as soon as there was some kind of language, whether it's a narrative verbal language or whether it's a physical touching or sign language or whatever, that's when what human being kind of comes into it. Okay, I get it. And again, yeah. going back to the um, analogy with computers, you talked about programming languages. Yeah. That programming languages are taking the ones and the zeros, putting them into a certain order. The act of doing that essentially lets you it creates language that yeah. allows those sets of ones and zeros, which again, as in telling something to do it or not do it, do or don't do, is a way of putting that into an order. And one consequence of that would be if they're done with, and we use the word intention, because used in that context, it's a, a person creating the language is saying I'm doing that with the intention of creating a game or intention of creating something that allows other users to do this with their device. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That in that context, that's what language could be or the term language is being used to describe that process. And would you feel that's an appropriate way to describe what was happening in a human? Well, this, this is why we are apart from animals. I mean, we have programmed ourselves we have also artificially selected ourselves. This is why in some ways what, what is true in terms of natural selection is not entirely true for human beings. Oh, go we, on. we have taken control of the process. And if we take control of the process, we, we, although we are part of nature, in a way what we're doing is also artificial selection. So in the same way that we have artific artificially selected the chihuahua, we have also, from the wolf, we are also artificially selected. Have we? Our, well, not us personally. You and me. <laughs> Did I miss this one? Well, did I miss not, that episode? Not, not personally, but you know, <laughs> uh, we historically our species has has <laughs> taken it, taken the wolf and ended up yes, with a chihuahua. Yeah. So essentially, domestic domesticated wild dogs. Yeah, and we have done the same thing okay. to ourselves, both slightly genetically and mentally too. Okay, I think I'm following. So where we go with this? So this is so this is coming back. To, memes is going to be the one of the topics here. So you're saying that that evolution. Okay, so one set of questions here would be, what happened that went from it not having that, say, in our, yeah. our ancestors, our predecessors, what the term would be, sure. to something happens right. that's the first chunk that takes yeah. that almost into, let's use the phrase, another dimension. Okay, but I mean, the same, the same question could be put uh, in various points in evolution. What, you know, what, why did mitochondria 
you know, join forces with another cell? You know, why did a dinosaur take flight? Why the mammals? Why the marsupials? And the fact of the matter is, is that the answer why in evolution, I mean, there is, no, there, there is no why. It's, it's purely chance. And, and the, the fact is, is that because you've got biology expressed in an environment, in nature, things happen. And one of the great, I mean, so they get, say, say, da, 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 say that again. Because you have biology expressed, being expressed in, in nature, nature, in an environment, in, which one do you prefer that? Choose a word, nature or environment. Which one do you want to go with quickly? Boom, go with your gut. Uh, nature's fine. Okay. Because, because biology nature involves... being expressed in nature. Mm -hmm. simply about being expressed then you get go on the yeah, this process includes happenstance chance stuff yeah. happens with no real underlying principle sure or well, guiding, I mean, guiding principle it's just, the guiding principle is mm, well chance or happenstance or well let's put it this way evolution is not about getting something that's more complex at the end okay, okay. That again, that's purely from, from our perspective, there is a complexity and complexity does in, you know, increase in some ways, but that's not what evolution is not about producing complexity. Um, again, it, it's, it's happenstance, it's historical. But again, in terms of complexity, that's quite an interesting word. Um, yeah. Evolution is not about increasing complexity. No. Though, then, again, this is a naive question coming back, though sure. that's what appears to be the case when we right. look at things evolving. Sure. Particularly if we're then using the example of, well, if that language evolves, does that add a level of complexity to what was there before? Well, all right, let's, let's not talk about, remember what I said about human beings, we change the system a little bit. So let's ignore, you know, human beings for the time being. If you okay. look at everything, if you look at everything that comes before us, you know, I mean, evolution, this is a very simple way of describing it. Evolution is a ratchet, right? I remember I, we started one of these, um, these, these discussions, and I talked about the watchmaker. Mm -hmm. Now, the blind, the blind watchmaker, the which blind I believe watchmaker. is the title of another book by a certain Richard Dawkins. That's correct. Now, evolution is a ratcheting process. And you know what a ratchet is? Everyone knows what a ratchet is? Well, describe it for us. What's the key aspects of it that's relevant here? Okay, the key aspect of a ratchet is, is that you can turn the ratchet both left and right, but only one way drives it forward. Okay. So you can get, um, you can move it randomly, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, but you still get forward motion. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's how evolution works, because the consequences of bad things occurring, of, of bad, say, mutations. So if you get a deleterious mutation or something that's yeah. negative, the consequence of that is death. And death is a pretty, you know, if you're dead, you don't have offspring. Dead people, dead baby, you know, dead dead mothers leave no offspring. That's What's the one? Dead men don't wear plat, plat? Is that a film? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and living things produce living things. Yeah. And really, Evolution is a ratchet. Dinosaurs, for example, were around for 150 million years or whatever, and they didn't need cognition. So cognition, you know, they didn't need language. They didn't need um, the, the things that we we do in our in our head. And the fact is that brains, for example, brains did not evolve to think. I think that's a very important uh, conclusion. You know. All the animals on this planet that have had brains, only one of them thinks in the way that we think. Well, well, my conclusion from that is brains did not evolve to think, at least in the way we think. Okay. I mean, would you agree with that? Is that a controversial statement? <laughs> well, uh, brains, well, I'm saying as in they weren't designed, you know, they weren't designed, because often the term is, okay, I, got, but, I start fumbling for words, as in, that what, that's not a necessary endpoint of the evolution of a bre of brains of evolution is to lead to thought. That's been one of the consequences of evolution, is that one species that we refer to now as humans, which we happen to be part of, you and me, yeah, happen to have that experience of uh, thinking. 
Is that, is that another way of saying it? I don't know if I've said it in a really kind of, let's say, crappy way. I mean, right, I like okay, that. We've ended again. We, 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 start, we, start, we start on such a high, and then you go, oh, oh, we're fumbling for words. Where are we going with this? Um, should we pause at this one? We, we, we start with memes. We've, yeah. stopped, we've explored memes, and we've, we've yeah. touched upon that. That allowed us to talk a little bit about both Richard Dawkins, and by the time now I have wandered down a different part of the house, and I do have the selfish gene. It sure. cost me only one pound from where it was. So sorry, um, Professor Dawkins, I'm afraid my copy doesn't seem to have led some money into your pocket. Oh, and it says at the bottom, yeah, and author of The Blind Watchmaker. Uh, and for those of you who haven't heard of Richard Dawkins, then where the hell have you been for the last hundred years? At the time of writing this book, he was lecturer in zoology at Oxford University and a fellow of New College. Nowadays, where, where, what's, his, what's he up to these days, Louis, would you know? Uh, I, I must admit, I, I, I haven't really been in the, because I know he's quite a prominent atheist. I believe so. Um, one, and he's got fairly, a, fairly prominent, isn't he? One, he's of the, got a, one of the big ones. He's got a Dawkins Foundation. Yeah, of course he has, so I assume he's busy with that. So if you're listening, uh, um, Richard, Professor Dawkins, by all means, you know where you can post a little comment about this and say, have we, has Louis done a fair job of summarising what you understand by, you may as well think big here, Louis. You know, all it takes is one person to say, this, is, this, is, this guy's talking crap. Oh, I, I know, I happen to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Send him the link. And he may go, that's interesting, whatever, I get a of that crap going on. You never know. So anyway, we'll find out where exactly he is now, and you'll go online, you will tell us. But the book we've been referring to is The Selfish Gene. I will add to my reading list, reading about the chapter on memes. We talked about that. That took us talking about Sue Blackmore. Again, Professor Blackmore, Sue, Susan, uh, whatever name you want to go by, then please, if somebody passes you this link and you're willing to be invited to talk to either or both of us about memes particularly, or consciousness, which I know has been one of Sue's kind of interest over her career. Um, and then we talked about language, we talked about, you know, all these kind of ideas. Uh, so that final question you were saying then, brains or rather evolution, but no, brains did not evolve to think. What was the, what was the way you asked it? Or yeah, yeah, brain, brain, brains did not evolve to think, yeah. Okay. In the way, or at least in the way human beings think. Okay, so let's come back to that then. We'll pick up next time. We're talking about um, the role of evolution when it comes to humans, at least and brains thinking, and I think what's really key here as well is interesting, and I found myself exploring over the last few months in particular and coming to different conclusions about the role of language. Let's also pick up those ideas next time. We'll pick up, we'll start this idea, did brains evolve to think? And you'll say, right. no, you didn't. This is what I mean by that. Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds good to me. And on that note, say bye-bye. <laughs>